Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Budget SSD Comparison SATA versus NVMe. Which should you buy? 128 gigabyte drive sizes are very reasonably priced these days, under $40 in many cases. And we're looking at two very popular drives the ADATA SU800 SATA drive versus the ADATA SX6000 NVMe drive. These are both M.2 drives right here, but they are not alike. The SU800 is a SATA or serial ATA drive, so it's no faster than the 2.5 inch version you can also buy for a similar price point, about $35 when I recorded this video. On the other hand, the SX6000 is purely an NVMe drive, only available in the M.2 format, advertised as up to about 1000 megabytes per second or twice as fast as this. $40 when I recorded this video, only $5 more than the SU800. Should be fairly clear cut, double the performance, $5 more? Why watch the video? Go buy that drive, right? Not so fast. If it were that easy, I'd have said that already. Now, links down in the description below will be links to both of these drives, as well as these drives, I'll talk about those in a minute, to both Amazon and Newegg. Compare prices because everything I'm about to say depends upon the price of these drives. If it changes in the future when you watch this video, then the conclusions will adjust a little bit. But for now, $35 versus $40 SATA versus NVMe at the same size. Before we get to that, I want to talk to you briefly about Floatplane. Floatplane is the monthly subscription-only service hosted by Linus Media Group. For $3 per month, you get ad-free viewing, downloadable videos, early access videos. Many of these videos you're looking at right here are not yet on YouTube. They will be, but they're not yet. You get both of the Tech Deals channels, Tech Deals and Tech Deals Gaming, and exclusive videos. Visit the Microsoft Store or visit to the Tesla Model X. That's my daughter sitting right there. Those are not main channel videos, but those will never be on YouTube. And then, of course, a bunch of benchmarks and some other things that you otherwise would not see. Now, there are other content creators there. Each one is $3 a month, and it directly supports the creators. So if you want ad-free access, if you want early access, downloadable videos, and if you want to know that you're supporting tech deals, please consider signing up using the link down in the video description below. A quick note on drive sizes before we get to the actual benchmark results. 128 gigabytes is pretty small these days. It used to be quite generous, but these days, Windows 10, a few Windows updates, patches, a few downloaded applications, a word processor, or an office suite is going to take up more than 50% of the drive space very, very quickly, leaving you with comparatively little room to actually install any games or anything else on the drive. Now, many people buying a drive in this size are going to say, well, I'm going to buy one of these and then maybe a two terabyte hard drive, which are now about 50 to $60, and that'll be my great game drive. Fair enough, I understand that. Many pre-built come that way. Many pre-built will come with a 120 gig SSD and then a one or two terabyte hard drive to give you enough space for all of that. The thing is, pre-built companies realize that the average person buying a pre-built isn't checking benchmarks. They aren't looking at the brand of the drive. They may not even know the brand of the drive. It just has an SSD. They just know they should have one. And so that's good enough. But in this case, if you're custom building a machine, you care about such things. My advice to you, don't buy this size. Buy the 256 gigabyte size instead. For example, the SX6000, it's $40 for the 128. It's $60 for the 256. For 50% more money, you get 100% more space, but it's better than that. Once Windows is installed on both of these drives, you actually have two and a half times as much space on the 256 actually free once everything's on there than you do the 128. So two and a half times the free space for $20. You have to be pretty budget strapped for that $20 to make a difference. In my opinion, these are almost a non-starter in that regard. But I understand you're on a really tight budget. You want an SSD, but maybe you're putting together a Ryzen 3 2200G, a Pentium G5400, and you just need a Windows boot drive. You don't care about the extra space. You're not going to install a lot of programs. It's just a basic machine. Fair enough, that's what this video is for. If you have decided that no matter what, you are going to get a 128 gig drive, let me show you the differences between a SATA drive and an NVMe drive at this price point. 
The first benchmark I want to show you is Crystal Disk Mark. This is the standard test that I run on all of my storage reviews. Here we have the SU800 and here we have the SX6000. In all the tests except for one, the SX6000 is the clear winner, some points by quite a substantial margin. The random write speeds, especially on the lower half of that chart, are dramatically faster than the random write speeds of the SU800. The random read speed is faster, the sequential read speed is faster, clearly it's the better drive, case closed. Well, hang on a second, take a look at the sequential write speed. Now, I reran this test multiple times. I tried different sizes, I tried different durations, I rebooted the computer. That number is way, way low. I did make triple sure that that number is correct. It is much, much slower for sequential write speeds than the SU800 is. And then I found out why. I did some further testing and I did some real world testing. I copied GTA 5 to both of these drives. Now, that's not actually a very realistic option if these are boot drives because GTA 5 is 80 gigabytes in size. If you install Windows on these drives, GTA 5 would not fit. But these are test drives, they're blank, Windows is installed on a different drive on my test bench. So I copied GTA 5 over and let me show you those results. Now this is part way through the file copy You'll notice that the first part of the copy is very, very quick. You can see the very tall green bars on the SU-800 right here. They extend for about halfway across the actual data, about 40 gigabytes worth of the data, give or take. Take a look at how far across the copy the green bar stays high on the SX-6000. Much, much less. Both drives slow down dramatically sometimes below 30 megabytes per second in write speed as it gets further along in the write. But the SX6000 falls apart much sooner than the SU800 does. The SU800 can take tens of gigabytes of data at full speed write versus the SX6000. This demonstrates the challenge of using benchmarks to demonstrate drives true performance. And on larger drives, this is less of an issue. On the 256 gig version of the SU-800 and the 256 gig version of the SX-6000, both drives would maintain green bars across either all or most of that. And most of the real world performance deficiencies of these drives are eliminated in the 256 gig version. Now this kind of brings me back to the why you shouldn't buy either one of these, you should buy the 256 version. And the simple fact of the matter is there aren't enough NAND memory chips on these to give any parallel operation or to be able to absorb lots of writes and lots of operations. Reads are okay. In fact, reads on the SX6000 are just fine, but there aren't enough NAND chips to absorb writes. As drives have gotten larger, and remember, these are now the smallest drives on the market. There used to be 60 gig and even 30 gig drives, but those are all gone. The NAND chips are too big. As the NAND memory chips have gotten bigger, they put fewer and fewer on each drive, meaning there's fewer parallel operations. The 256 drives, in some respects, will be double the performance of these drives, and the 512 gig versions will, in many respects, be, again, maybe not double the speed of the 256, but faster again. Still, it falls off above that. Once you pass the 500 gig size, there's very little additional performance outside of extreme cases. What's interesting is if you go a few years back, a 120 gig drive from a couple of years ago will actually do that Grand Theft Auto V copy better than either of these will because the NAND chips had fewer bits on them so they had more memory chips in them. I, for example, have an Intel 330 series 120 gig drive here. Now this was not 35 or $40 when it was brand new. So in, in fairness to this, this was a mid-range performance option back then. It has more memory chips on it, but this will handle sustained drive rights in ways that these won't because these are now the budget drive and this was not a budget drive when it came out. So as NAND memory chips have gotten larger, you want the larger drive because the 256 gig drives literally have twice as many chips on them as these do. Now that's GTA 5 file copy speed. That's copying GTA 5 over to both of these drives. I then ran GTA 5 off of them. Now I am going to split screen here on the bottom of the screen, put up the game load 
performance. This is real time, by the way, this is not cut or edited. And then I'm gonna put the load to actual playable from the start button, clicking on story mode. Now, the only trim in these two particular replays is going to be in my mouse motion and delay in clicking on the story button icon because the amount of time I took to actually click on story mode is slightly different. So I will trim those to match from the click. But what you're gonna see here essentially is that there is very little difference between either launching GTA 5 or launching into the story mode and have it launch. Now, one reason for this is because some of this is CPU and memory bound. It's building the world, it's loading all the assets. It's not necessarily the transfer rate of the drive that limits the performance. Now, this test was done on a Ryzen 7 2700X, which is overkill for these drives. You should have a better drive for that machine, but it takes away as much of the CPU limitation as is reasonable to my standard SSD test bench. 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 MHz RAM. It's a very, very nice machine. Windows 10 is not installed on either of these drives. GTA 5 wouldn't fit. It was installed on the Crucial MX500 that's the actual boot drive on that machine. But as you can see, it's, there's really not much difference. In terms of read performance, in terms of loading games and whatnot, there's not gonna be a lot of difference between these drives. Here's the thing that may surprise many of you. Because of the terrible write performance in the real world, regardless of, in fact, I'll put the two charts back up here again. The Crystal Disk Mark says that the random write performance of the SX6000 is superior, especially in heavy Q depths. But it really isn't, because you're not going to be using this drive in that environment. Because of its actual real dreadful write performance and how little SLC cache it has before the performance falls straight to the floor. At the price these drives are currently at, $35 and $40, I would actually buy the SU800 over the SX6000 at the 128 size. Now my advice changes at the 256 size. Currently, it's about $56 for the 256 SU800 versus $59 for the 256 gig SX6000. Now I don't have benchmark results for those here for you now because they were previously tested at those size. I do have those drives. Well, I did have this one. It was in the giveaway machine from a few months ago, so I don't have it anymore. I did benchmark it, but that was on a different platform and I cannot compare those benchmark results to this drive because the machines they were tested on are different. So it's not a fair comparison. The 256 uh, gig SU800 I actually do still have that. That's on a test bench downstairs, but it's got data on it and it's also got several terabytes of data written to it, where is this is a clean, fresh drive. So again, I can't compare that fairly, which is why I'm not showing you those results. But I do have the drives and I have used them. And so when I tell you that they are much, much better, well, I speak from experience. So with the 256 gig size, buy the SX6000. At the 128 gig size, I would buy the SU-800. It has better endurance for writing sustained writes. Running Windows Update, there's a lot of data going in and out. You're gonna fill up the SLC cache on the SX-6128 awfully quick. I like the SU-800 for this size, especially it's $5 cheaper. If you're on this much of a budget, every $5 may make a difference. Either way, they're fine, but you are compromising at this size. Spend $20 more, buy a 256 gig drive. It will last you much, much longer. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. Links in the video description will take you to all these drives and everything I've mentioned in both sizes to both Amazon and Newegg. Check current prices. If the prices have dramatically changed, if this becomes cheaper or more expensive and this is cheaper, then that changes it a little bit. The other note that I'd like to make, ADATA sent me the bigger drives. ADATA did not send me either one of these drives. ADATA is good to me and sends me a lot of stuff, but they didn't send these to me for a reason because the 128 gig size is frankly, it's terrible in terms of performance. But that's true of most 128s these days. I'm not just picking on ADATA. But I did buy these drives with my own money and I wanted to see how well this size worked versus the ones they actually like to send to me. In any case, thank you very much for watching this video. I will see all of you next time.